Welcome to Sourdoughing with Chrissy. So if you're watching this video, you might have some of my sourdough starter and you're like, what do I do with it? What should I do with it now that I have it? So I'm going to show you step by step, little video by little video on what to do with your sourdough starter once you receive it. So you probably have a little container or a jar about this big with some starter in it. And there is, I think there's 50 or a hundred grams in this jar that you have. And I'm going to show you some tools that you need in order to make sourdough because it's not as simple as just making dough and baking it. So keep this. We're going to need a digital scale, digital food scale. I highly recommend because the pot that you cook in is very essential. And getting a cast iron skillet, not cast iron skillet, a Dutch oven. It's also cast iron, but Dutch oven pot is what you need, okay? This is a six quart Dutch oven pot. I recommend six quarts. Any brand will do six quarts because of how big my loaves are and how my recipe will grow. So it will fit perfectly in a six quart Dutch oven, okay? So I'm getting a Dutch oven. The flour that I use, and you have to use unbleached flour. You can use all-purpose flour, bread flour, any flour you want, as long as it is unbleached, okay? The bleach, the bleached flour will kill the starter, so it will not do anything, it'll just kill it. So unbleached flour is very important, any brand you'd like. Filtered water is very important. I like to do room temperature filtered water, and sometimes if I don't have time to get it to room temperature, I will put my filtered water in the microwave for like 30 seconds just to get it to room temperature or a little on the warm side. Filtered water is very important because the chlorine and the fluoride in our tap water will also kill the starter. So filtered water. A very large Ziploc bag. Um, this is a two and a half gallon size Ziploc bag. And the only reason I recommend two and a half gallons is because you are going to take your bowl or your basket that you're going to store your bread in to rise inside of here. So it has to be a pretty large plastic bag, okay? So I have these Banneton baskets to rise the dough in. You probably don't, and that's totally okay because I have improvised when I've run out of these because I make a lot of bread. So you can also just grab a, bo a bowl in your house, probably about this big, bigger than a cereal bowl, but smaller than a mixing bowl. This is how big your dough loaf will actually be. So making sure that you take your Dutch oven and then take your bowl, put your bowl inside your Dutch oven and make sure that there's space around that bowl because your bread is going to expand when it bakes. So make sure that's the bowl that you're going to be using for it to rise. It's smaller than your Dutch oven. Then a cloth napkin, um, I just have, oh, I just have a linen cloth here, or I've used cloth napkins before and kind of fold it up to the size of a cloth napkin. You're going to lay that into your bowl and kind of push down and that's where your bread is going to rise in. Um, it's going to be easier to uh, transport it once it's, being, once it's done rising overnight to flip it over and take it out of here because then the whole napkin falls out, okay? So another tool that I highly recommend is a rubber spatula maybe some spoons, mixing bowl. It doesn't have to be this big. These are just my standard mixing bowls. I have a ton of them and I make my loaves in here. Any mixing bowl will do. Plastic, metal, glass, anything you want. Then um, some saran wrap or some glad press and seal. This is going to be needed for when you're mixing and stretching and folding your dough to cover this up. All right, so those are all of the supplies I'm thinking. Oh and a very sharp knife. So a paring knife will do, hold on, I'll get a small one so you can see it. A small paring knife will do because you're going to need the very sharp, smooth cut knife to score the bread before you bake it. And ice cubes, make sure you have ice cubes too. I'm trying to think of anything else that you might need. Salt also. So I just have my salt jar over there and I just use um, sea salt in my dough. So some sea salt is another thing you need. If you want to add inclusions into your dough, some rosemary, some garlic, some apples, some pumpkin, whatever it is that you want, 
that would be in addition to all of these ingredients, but I'm just doing the simple plain loaf. So I'm gonna make another video showing you how to start the starter.